our schoolers. Today we're going to read a book that was one of my favorites when I was your age, and it's called Liza Lou and the Yeller Belly Swamp by Mercer Mayer. He's the same guy that does the little critter books. And this was one that I always liked when I was little, so I thought that you guys might like it too. It's a little bit of a silly story, but I like it anyway. One fine day, Liza Lou's mother said, Apple Dumpling, I want you to take this tote bag full of sweet potatoes over to Grandma's house and cook them up for her. She's feeling a mite poorly, but mind you be especially careful when you cross the yeller belly swamp. I will, Mama, said Liza Lou as she set off along the old swamp road. She had heard tell about a good-for-nothing swamp haunt thereabouts who snatched away small children. And no sooner did she come to an old abandoned shed than she heard a terrible moaning and howling. Sure enough, out of a broken window jumped a pale, nasty swamp haunt. It's kind of like a ghost. Liza Lou, that swamp haunt moaned, I'm going to snatch you away. Oh, Mr. Swamp Haunt, cried Liza Lou, snatch me away if you must. But please, oh please, don't snatch away my tote bag full of sweet potatoes. Now, a swamp haunt may be good at snatching, but he is none too good at catching on. So lickety split, he snatched that tote bag right out of Liza Lou's hand. Oh no, cried Liza Lou. Whatever you do, don't carry those sweet potatoes over to my grandma's house and please, oh please, don't cook them up in a pan. But before you could say, yeller belly cotton mouth, possum up a tree, you can catch the swamp fever, but you can't catch me. That good for nothing swamp haunt ran clear through the swamp to grandma's house, just so he could cook up those sweet potatoes and make Liza Lou miserable. Does she look miserable to you? She tricked him. Now, Grandma loved fresh cooked sweet potatoes, but she surely didn't like any good for nothing swamp haunt messing around in her kitchen. So before she sat down to eat, one, two, three, she picked up that still hot frying pan and shooed him right out the door. By that time, Liza Lou was safe at home, having a fine sweet potato dinner with her mother. The very next morning, Liza Lou's mother said, Sugar Plum, I want you to pull across the swamp and take these hot huckleberry muffins to your Auntie Jane. But mind you hurry over, because there's no sense dilly-dallying in that yellow belly swamp. Liza Lou did as she was told. No dillying under the bobcat, no dallying beside the cotton mouth, and not a bit of dilly-dallying alongside an alligator. By and by, she came to Auntie Jane's. After a tasty lunch of black-eyed peas with huckleberry muffins for dessert, it was time to pull back home. Liza Lou, said Auntie Jane, if you will take this soiled Sunday go-to-meeting finery and boil it up and scrub it all real clean for me by next Friday, I'll bake you a pecan pie of your very own. But get home real quick now, so as you won't be in that yellow belly swamp after dark. Liza Lou did not have to be told twice. She knew all about the wicked swamp witch lurking out there in the weeds. If ever she caught you, there was no telling what she would do. Well, no sooner had Liza Lou pulled round a big clump of cattails than a gnarled hand reached out and grabbed her. Liza Lou, that swamp witch cackled, I'm gonna boil you in a big pot of water and then I'm gonna chew on your bones. Oh, Miss Swamp Witch, cried Liza Lou, boil me in your big pot of water if you must and chew on my bones as much as you like. But please, oh please, don't boil this precious little child I've got cradled in my arms. Does she really have a child? No, it's Auntie Jane's laundry. Now, everyone knows that a swamp witch is meaner than a stomped on polecat, but not everybody knows 
but she is blinder than a cave bat. That means she can't see very well. Quicker than a blink, that old witch grabbed up the bundle of Sunday go to meat and finery and pitched it into the boiling water. And she snickered as she stirred and stirred. <laughs> but just because the swamp witch can't see worth a toot doesn't mean she can't sniff out a lie. I don't smell no little child cooking in this pot, she said suspiciously. Why, Miss Swamp Witch, said Liza Lou, sweet as syrup, then maybe you should smell a little closer. So the witch leaned way over the pot, and she sniffed, and she sniffed. There ain't no little child in this pot at all, growled the witch, but... Before you could say, one, two, three, four, five on the double, if you mess with me, it's a round of trouble, Liza Lou pushed that old swamp witch, splat, into the pot of hot water. With a hoot and a holler, that witch left right back out again and skedaddled into the swamp, screeching with all her might. After a while, the Sunday go-to meeting finery was boiled all nice and clean, so Liza Lou fished it out and went on home. When Friday came, her Auntie Jane baked her a pecan pie of her very own, which Liza Lou shared with her mother. Honey child, Liza Lou's mother said one sparkly afternoon, take this wagon load of junk and pitch it in the dump. But mind you watch your P's and Q's down by that yellow belly swamp bridge. Now, Liza Lou took good advice when she got it because she'd been warned about the slithery, gobbledygook living under the old swamp bridge. If ever he heard of anybody crossing, he slithered up and gobbled that person for his dinner. No sooner had Liza Lou crossed over the rickety old bridge than sure enough, that gobbledygook crept out of the mucky goo and said, my, my, my. Here comes dinner. Why, whatever can you mean by that, Mr. Gobbledygook, said Liza Lou, bold as brass. That means I'm going to gobble you up right here and now. Oh, that does make me feel better, said Liza Lou. Gobble me up if you must. Go right ahead, but please, oh please, don't gobble this valuable treasure I'm trucking in my wagon. Well, a gobbledygook? He doesn't know what treasure is from what it isn't. He just likes to gobble. So he asked greedily, is treasure any good for gobbling? Nobody gobbles treasure, Liza Lou said. Everybody saves it. Child, said the gobbledygook, don't you tell me what to do because I gobbles anything I likes. And the first thing I'm gonna gobble up is that treasure. And he commenced to gobble the whole wagon load of junk. When he was done, he turned to Liza Lou. Now I'm gonna gobble up you. But try as he might, he couldn't even stand. He had gobbled far too much junk. That rickety old swamp bridge began to creak and sway. And before you can say, catch a turtle, catch a snake, catch a little froggy, if you throw cornbread down the well, it's gonna get real soggy. That slithery gobbledygook sank, glub, glub, back into the mucky goo where he belonged. Well, thought Liza Lou as she drove her mother's empty wagon back home, that bridge never was too safe anyway. Bright and early the next morning, Liza Lou's mother said, hush puppy, I want you to take this jar of blackstrap molasses over to the parson's wife so she and the parson can have some with their breakfast hotcakes. But mind you be most particular when you pass that old well on the far side of Yeller Belly Swamp. I will, Mama, said Liza Lou, because she knew all about that sly swamp devil living at the bottom of the well. If ever he caught anyone passing by, he jumped down inside his ear and stole his soul. I like Liza Lou's doll. 
When Liza Lou got to that old well, there sat that swamp devil, just waiting for her. Liza Lou, he said, I'm gonna jump down inside your ear and steal your soul away. Now, a swamp devil is pretty tricky. So Liza knew she'd better do some pretty fancy thinking. Oh, Mr. Devil, she said, I am sure glad to hear that. I thought you were going to steal away this soul I'm keeping safe inside this jug. Now, what would I want with just any old soul? That devil grinned. It's yours I want, Liza Lou. Thank goodness, sighed Liza Lou, because it's the parson's soul I've got inside my jug, and it would be just awful if ever you stole that. Of course, there's nothing in this world a sly swamp devil likes more than a parson's soul. Open up that jug, child, he wheedled, and you just let me see the parson's soul. Well, Liza Lou let him take a peek. I don't see nothing down there, except molasses, sneered the swamp devil. Oh, I'm glad enough of that, said Liza Lou. I was afraid you might jump down inside to get a better look. Why, that's exactly what I'm going to do, said the swamp devil. And before you can say, cats are sneaky and a fox is sly, sly but the devil's best friend is a blue bottle fly, that swamp devil turned himself into a fly and <laughs> buzzed right down inside the jug. There ain't nothing down here at all, hollered up that swamp devil. Oh, yes, there is, Mr. Swamp Devil, said Liza Lou. You are. And with that, she pushed the cork into the jug real tight. Then Liza Lou delivered the jug just as her mother had told her. And the parson and his wife sat right down to enjoy a nice breakfast of hot cakes and blackstrap molasses. Why, uh, the parson's wife poured some over her hotcakes. Why, she said, there's a fly stuck in this molasses. Well, my sweet, said the parson, why don't you just swat it? And that's exactly what she did. Look, you can see him on there. As for Liza Lou, she skipped all the way back home to her mother. And from that day to this, no one has ever seen hide nor hair of devils gobbledygooks, witches, or haunts in the Yellow Belly Swamp. And nobody misses them either. So, when I was your age, I always liked Liza Lou because she's kind of tricky. She's a very clever girl. And whenever she has a problem, instead of saying, oh, somebody help me, Liza Lou thinks, hmm, what can I do so that I'm not going to get caught? And I like that a lot. I think Liza Lou is a fun person to read about. So I hope you enjoyed the story too, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.